welcome back to Adobe Live and Animation 301. That's right, we're back for a fourth season, even though it says three in the title. This is the fourth season. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed the stream that was on just earlier. Um, let me say a quick hello, hello before we get started. Hi, Robert. Hi, Wade. Hi, Joshua. Una. Good to see you all. I hope you're excited to learn some new things because we've been all over the bend this last couple of months. We've done some After Effects work. We've done some frame by frame animation stuff. And I thought, how about we bring it back to some more After Effects things that we haven't actually started yet. So as always, we have a couple of what's and we have some more fun downloadable mini games to help us learn. Ooh, all the exciting stuff. Woo! Oh, Joshua! Wow, that opener was awesome! Thank you! I'm so glad you like it! It took me a, a little while, <laughs> but I'm really glad you like it. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how to use texture loops as well as masking and mats. So that means we have our two watts. So, for the first one, what is texture shading? In our case, texture shading is a looping or as an animated looping series of brush strokes so we can make some textured brush strokes in photoshop photoshop Ooh. have a couple different ones and if we choose to lay them on top of each other and space them out let's say maybe two or four frames between each of them it will create a kind of moving animated movement like so just don't throw shade the way that you and Wade are here together, I don't know if we're ready for the kind of puns that are going to be coming. Okay, texture shading's pretty explanatory and pretty easy and quick to do. How is that going to work in conjunction with masking? Okay, well first, what is it? What is masking or mats? It's a way to conceal or reveal parts of your content. Great for making screen transitions or things visible that might have been kind of tricky before. So let's say we've got two characters and maybe they're behind something and we want to know what's going on. Well, there's a really simple way to do it. We're able to turn any object into a mat, making it easy for us to keep the same shape while being able to reveal or hide something. So in this case, We've got a version of the front cover of the box and the circle of the magnifying glass is tied to it. So whenever it's on, it will reveal what's behind it. Oliver, I got stuck. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> By the time I noticed it was too late. Okay, class project, huh? This time we've got three lessons. We've got Dicey, TV Tuner and Sharpener. I was kind of hoping nobody noticed, but I see you did. Wonderful. <laughs> so we've got Dicey, TV Tuner and Sharpener. We're back to having more than just one because doing the mini games is a lot faster when we're not doing it frame by frame. So this is your call to action to go ahead and download the files right now. It's inside the description box in the YouTube window. Otherwise I'm sure Wade will pop it down below in the chat. But this is your call to action. We'll wait a little bit so you have a chance to open your program. Of course we know it's Oliver, no! <laughs> Oliver, why? The tongue just went off on its own track. It said, see you later. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, if I could go red, I would. Mm -mm. Well, I think we've had an ample amount of time and the chat is hopefully still on my side while laughing from the corner <clears throat> so that means we're ready for our first one number one dicey thank you wade see that's the right answer we've got dicey all we have to do is add our textured animated loop to our dice uma you're not helping so when you open your file, you'll notice if you press the space bar, it is moving already. Yay. That's great. Oh, Silver. Welcome on in, Silver. Thank you so much for your high highs. 
I hope work goes well. Hello, AAR. Welcome on in. Dice, dice. Yeah, dice, dice, baby. But no DMCA, so we've got to be careful. Right, so the dice is already animated, but we don't have the brush stroke, and it's not actually added to the layer of it. Blah, blah, blah. The tongue is really, does it need water? Like, I don't know. If we take a look in the project section, we've got the brush stroke and it says apply me. That way we know we need it. If we double click on it, we can go and see what I've added. We've got four different brush strokes doing their things. If we press the space on this, we can see them all moving. We don't have to go in here, but if you want to use your own brush strokes, you can do it in the same manner as I've done these ones. And a really useful tip that I learned recently let me make a new composition to show this as an example. Let's say that you do have a series of brushes. So for instance, I'm just going to grab these ones again. I'm just going to copy and paste them over. Normally, when you have your layers laid out, they're on top of each other like so. And we want it to loop for a little while. You can totally do it with expressions, but I'm a bit old school when I tend to manually do it. So you might go through, grab one, drag it over, do the same, do the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's an actual better and faster way to do it. If you click the bottom one first and then the top one, right click and go over to keyframe assistant, sequence layers and press okay, it will space them out for you. So that way, once you're sure of how long you want the frames to be on the screen for, make them all the right size, duplicate them, duplicate loads of them. And then all you have to do is click on the lowest one, click on the top one. Again, key from assistant, sequence, layers, and it's all done for you. Really, really awesome. Although there's a lot of them in the same order. I think if you're going to duplicate as many as I did there, Make sure that once you do, you click and drag and apply it to the top. That way it makes sure whatever's on the bottom stays on the bottom and what's on the top stays on the top. Cool. Okay. Welcome on in, Katrina. So now we've got a brush stroke. I'm just going to go ahead, click and drag it on top. So let's say I want to do the bottom one first. Let's inspect the layers that we've actually added. So I've got back dice, which I've locked, so you don't need to mess with that. But the one I haven't locked is back D mat. So if we turn on the isolated mode, we'll see that I've actually already made a mat version of the dice. So if we choose to, let's use this one as an example. Let's turn on the isolate for our brush as well. If we make sure you're on the right mode, if you don't see, or if your screen is currently showing this, go to the bottom and click toggle switch mode. You'll see one that says track mat and a little pick whip. You're going to grab the pick whip from the brush, the thing that you want to see on top of the thing that you don't want to see. There we go. Now it does tend to remove the visibility of the layer you've added. So if you still want to see the layer that was there before, just go and turn the eyeball layer back on. So now it's constrained within it. Pretty useful. When you're in Photoshop, you can make these shapes already automatically, or you can manually do them inside After Effects like we are going to do. What color should this shadow be, by the way? At the moment, it's black, but it's just because it would be really easy for us to go into the effects and presets and pick any color. So I'll have anything, please. While I'm waiting for your color choice, uh, we can say I kind of want the, the lightish bit to be seen. So I'm just going to rotate it till I can find the kind of bit that I want. I think I kind of like that. So I like this, but if I press the space bar, it's not going to move with it and I really want it to. So the best way to make it stay with it is to use the parent tool. Cool. But there is one thing. I might want it to only be in this section. How do I do that? Very, very good way. Let me first unconnect its mat. I'm going to duplicate the track mat because I still might want it later. A deep purple. 
Oh, everybody's going for purple. Okay, Stacy. Okay, Oliver, I got you. We'll turn it to a deep purple. Look at you, deep twinning. Okay, so I've got... Wait, is it Jinx? Jinx! Okay. I've got my other mat. It is duplicated, but I only want this bit. So if we go up to the pen tool, make sure the layer is selected. I'm just going to kind of click within the gap. Doesn't need to be too careful on the outside. Now it's masked our mask. Ooh, lots of M's. Okay. And we're going to do the same again. I'm just going to duplicate the brush stroke. Maybe I don't want to drag it down again. I'm going to parent it to the mat because the mat's already following. I'm going to do the track mat as well. There we go. Let's hide this one. And now if we press play, our textures at the bottom and it's not going over to the other side. Perfect. So let's do the same for this side as well. Do we want it purple all over? Or do we want to change up the colors? Let me know. In the meanwhile, I'm going to apply the other side and then pop the purple on. So for this one, we're going to do the same again. Going to grab my pen tool. It's actually easier for me to do it in isolate mode. The first time I was doing this for the example, I was doing it with the outline still on, but being able to see where the gaps are kind of makes it a lot easier. You don't have to be too precious about it. Very, very nice. Cool. Make sure they're where they should be. Parent it over. Track mat it over. Make sure we can see it. And that's quite nice. All right. So if you want to change the color of your looping texture, the easiest way to do it is one, make it black or any simple color. We're going to go over to effects and presets. And if we type in fill when it's done loading, doing its ting. Oh, oh, there we go. You should have generate fill. So if I click and drag that over to one of them, you only need to do one. We can just copy and paste it on the others. You said a deep purple, hey? All right. That's not purple. There we go. Ooh, ooh okay. Okay. So we've got our deep purple. We can turn the opacity down or up. We can technically do that on the layer as well. Good choice, you two. I mean, you did just learn the bit of color theory in LUTs, right? Okay, I like that. Let's put that opacity number on the other one as well. That's 63. Val would be proud. Yay! Oh, yeah, Val's all about purple, right? And we don't actually have to go and drag the effects again. All we have to do is go over to the panel and copy it. If you don't see it, you might be in the project window. Just take a look above and you'll see a little window which says effects control and then you can copy it from there and paste it on the other one Ta -da! Ooh, i like it okay let's do the same for this other one here front dice mats we're gonna lock this one down that way i won't get distracted also if you want to tidy up your workspace because there's a lot of things on it what you can do is she is the what? No, that's not what it's called, but that's what I'm gonna call it. So make sure we've got the toggle switch on. You'll see this little face with like a nose and it's kind of looking over the corner. If you make it hide, when you click its version up here, it will hide all of the layers you're not working on. So it will make things really nice and clean and clear, especially when you've got loads of layers that you're working on. Very, very handy. Trust me, very handy. Mm. Me too. Yes, freeze. Yes. Okay, so I need some more brush strokes. I could definitely just duplicate those and I normally would. But apparently, I don't feel like it today. Huh. So we've got this new one over here. We can probably pop the color on straight away because we've already got it. And I think maybe just a tiny bit on the side. Oops, just a tiny bit over here. Okay, same as before. If we wanted to, we can just slap a track mat over it or instead of using the track mat, we can manually create a tiny section if we wanted to. 
but I kind of like how that's looking. Well, we'll see when we press play. Oh, we forgot to connect it. That means we need to parent it to the thing we want it to move to. Not too bad. I think it's probably better off one with a lower transparency. And... Oh, it's a lot better with lower transparency. And maybe being locked to a certain area. What am I looking for? Oh, I know what I'm looking for. Okay. I don't mind it being at the top so much, actually. I think that's quite cool. I just don't want it to come to the front. Remember when you're using your pen tool, you can click and drag to give you a interesting shape. It might make it easier for you to bend around corners while you're working. All right. Okay, not bad. Pretty simple. We dig it. We love it. Welcome, Breeze. Y'all sliding in all kinds of late. Oh, wow, Breeze. <laughs> oh, dear. So I know this one was pretty easy. Gonna make sure we start off with a simple one. And I know it was already animated, but um, if you think that all of them are gonna be pre-animated for you, you are wrong. So we've got more mini games for you to do. And these ones haven't been animated yet. So number two, TV tune Yes, we're going to add the texture on, but we also need to make sure that the TV actually changes the channel as well as giving the TV a little bit of movement as well. Okie dokie. So at the very bottom of your file, since I've managed to make sure they're all in one, we used to have multiple files, it's all in one this time. If you're on the stage one, Take a look over to the right hand side of that little window. You'll see it says stage two. That's where we're at now. So on stage two, we can see we've got a TV knob. Is this pre-recorded? <laughs> I'm just very, very good at the buttons. <laughs> we can move this around. We've got our cup and spoon layer. We've got our heart layer. We've got our screen mask, which I realized I didn't need in the end, but maybe you want it, so it's still there. And we've got our TV. So first things first, let's do the easy bit, which is adding on our texture, our moving texture. Miss Melanie, good day. Good day from London. Good day from Adobe. Ooh. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. Live, right, everyone? I mean, Eric, you're you're really boosting up my prowess of, you know, in the moment, button changing things. Thank you. Right, so my question to the chat is, what color should the shading on this texture be? In the example, I did use like a similar brown, but should we go with something else? It's completely up to you if you want it to be brown again, but let me know. So on this one, I didn't actually make a mask for you because it was too easy the first one. You got plenty of time. So we're going to make our own. This looks like it's just a straight up rectangle. So we're going to make one. Make sure you're not already clicking on a layer. If you are, it's actually going to mask your layer. And that's not what you want. We want a shape layer all of our own. I think it actually, at least I've noticed when I use it with a fill, it seems to do the thing that I need it to do. Thank you for all the behind the scenes prep you do, Pixie. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay, Eric. It's really boosted myself, you know. I was like, how can I, how can I add little razzmatazz to the show? I'm gonna find more things that I can add, trust me. Trust me. Okay, so we've got our first one. I'm gonna call it mask one. Hi, Proxy. And technically, oh no, they're not the same shape. Look at that, that's like, Slightly curved a little bit. So I've got mask one and I'm gonna hide it just so it's not in my way. And we've got mask two, which I'm manually going to do. Can I zoom out? I don't wanna to be too far away, but I don't wanna to be too close, you know. So what color should our shading be this time? Are we going for purple again? Oh, I was clicking inside the other mask. Gotta make sure we're somewhere new. There we go. 
That was smooth though, Pixie, by the way, wink, wink. Thank you. Trust me, the behind the scenes was me the other day, like, <clears throat> well, this morning. Cool, practice, practice, practice. It works. <laughs> mask number two. Mask two. Okay, we've got our mask one and we've got our mask two. I've not received the color yet, so we'll go with the standard colors. I'm gonna drag my brush stroke in again, rotate it till I find the kind of, I kind of want that, I want the lighter end to it. Also, has it cooled down for anybody yet? It's still a bit wild where I am. Oh my gosh, also, you know what? It's too late, I can't do it now. <laughs> but there was a creepy crawly on my window and I shut my window, but it went all the way up to the roof, which means it's probably gonna come down. So I <laughs> need to make sure that I shut my window. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I've got the first brush. We're gonna apply it to mask number one. Make sure we've got our track ability and parent it over. Cool. I'm gonna plop my fill on it and I'm gonna go for that slightly darker bit on the end. Finally cooling down, it's raining. Oh, I am looking forward to the rain. I really am. The sun in London is fun for about 10 minutes. It's fun for about 10 minutes and that's it. It's overstayed its welcome by like four weeks. I, I'm pretty sure this month used to be cold. I'm fairly certain. Okey-doke. So I'm going to say that this is okay. I could probably move it over a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of a nudge. There we go. Mm, make it a little bit bigger, maybe. It's cool down there too. Oh, wonderful. Make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, there you go. Play around with the size, the rotation, all of that jazz. Let me pop this on to mask number two. Now it's colors already that color. So I'm just gonna go a little bit darker so we can actually see it and make sure it's applied to the right one. Now, technically you don't need to move where it is in the layer order. The track mat will work as intended, but I found if you layer the layers in the order of what you're doing, it can also help you speed up your work process. Same here, the oh my goodness. Okay, I think we're getting um, the rain, the rain in like a week or two. If it comes today, that'd be wonderful. Okay, so I've added it on and I've made it a little bit darker. I want to change the timing of it. So I'm just going to pull the layer over a little bit. That way it doesn't look like it's moving at the exact same time. It's starting to feel like fall here as well. Mm. But heat wave isn't that bad, just low 90s. Low 90s? I'm gonna have to find out what that is in um, degrees. It was gone for a short while, but took a U turn. <laughs> I like that. It took a U turn. Yeah. All right. So I've done my textures. That bit's good. But the TV ain't doing no tuning, ain't turning no channel. We need to fix it. So, first things first, I'm probably going to. I'm gonna time, you could do this one or two ways. Either do the tuner first and then time the shows or make the shows change and then do the tuner. I think I'm actually going to do the shows. So let's say I want the heart first. We get bored of the heart. To chop the area, it's control shift and D. It's bored of the heart, We've got the heart, bored of the heart. We want some drink. We're happy about the drink for a little bit. Then we want to go back. Maybe we can have like a furious changing of the channel. Fade do! No, I'm sorry. No. I think, oh my, I think either 32, it was either at 32 or 40 that our traffic lights melted. And that was, was that this year or last year? No, we can't be doing with that. I'm sorry. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Couldn't handle it. Need a parasol. Mm -mm. So we've got this one, that one, this, that, this. Maybe like people are fighting over the remote. And then maybe they've settled on the heart. Need a little bit of love. 
and then they go straight back having a little bit of tea time tea time pixie no same pixie same you know just check no rain <sighs> mm -mm. you know you're gonna have to make your own you're gonna have to like stick a watering can somewhere above your head make sure it's full of water and just walk underneath it systematically and be like oh oh i mean compared to last year's and yet it still feels terrible oliver and yet it still feels terrible mm. Mm -mm. okay got one flick to the other this that this no i want this no i want to watch this boom no i want to watch this and is this the same as the front we could leave it over here right so let's get rid of this one let's say that we're happy with all of these because we're able to see where we've done the chop it's going to be really easy for us to turn the channel for five minutes oh do you lot get summer rain as well in the uk we tend to get summer rain it's still really hot it will rain during the day and it'll just be like Hua! and then it will be done the sun's still blazing but it'll be like yeah there you go it's like no that was three minutes it's like yep yeah, that's all you get so if the knob is this way it means it's the heart and when it changes this way it's tea time and all we have to do is copy our keyframes and make sure it's on the right channel when we turn it if you want you can totally have a little bit of space between your keyframes to know what i'm saying for those that haven't done the animation 201 and 101 courses beforehand because these are really close together it just snaps to it if you wanted a little bit of lead up so people knew when it was going to change you could separate them click f9 or right click and go to oh you can see that i tend to use the shortcuts more often than not there we go easy ease <laughs> it's mean over here oh no proxy i'm so sorry oh no i think i made it rain before <laughs> i have questions so now because there's a little bit of space with easy ease if we press the space bar we can see it turn but it doesn't really forewarn us to forewarn the audience something's going to happen you need anticipation since we're talking about the weather for us to know that rain's gonna come the anticipation is normally thunder and lightning and then the rain comes but in our case since we don't have a hand physically turning it we can have it slowly go in the opposite direction and then go so let's say we're here we can bop this up if we go to the graph editor flick this up for a little bit maybe move it out a little bit more if we don't have to make another keyframe it'd be really helpful we might need to because it's a bit short just gonna drag it back a little bit i will make a new keyframe why not Grab this one and rotate it back just a little bit. There we go. So now it's not done anything to the TV itself, but because it's moved back a bit, it's going to draw the audience's attention to it. I'm going to drag it out a little bit because I don't want it to change too quick. There we go. Yes. Okay, let's keep it this way. So we've got this one. Oh, we've got this one. We can now continue on and paste this. We're probably going to have to do it once more, though, because we've actually split the beginning and the middle and the end and all of that jazz. It's a lot faster if you have it automatically flip between it, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad because it is fun to give yourself a little bit of a challenge. So it looks like I've maybe moved it two frames apart one two copy and paste it we only have to do this twice and then we can just copy and paste it depending on where it is so this one let's have it go down a little bit more and then turn there we go anticipation anticipation sticking those principles of animation in there i like it thank you you know gotta keep it go what what did um what did Uma say earlier? Gotta have that U-turn, have it come back around. Mike mentioned something about looping at some point. 
Okay, so we've got this one, back to this one. So now we can just copy and paste it in the right place. But some of these look like they're getting a bit faster. It might not be a problem for us though. Let's see. It might not be. If your cuts are a little bit closer together than mine, there is something we can do to make the movement of our animation faster without actually going in and fiddling around with it. So make sure you select from the start of your keyframe to the end. And if you hold the Alt key down, that's normally next to your space bar. If you click and drag, it will move it within the correct or respective distance of each other. And that means this will be slower while keeping the same movement or faster while keeping the same movement. I think I might be all right though. Yeah, I think we're okay. And back to this one. Oh, that's the wrong one. Back to you. How do I sound like a news anchor? And back to you. On to the tea time. All my tea connoisseurs out there. Talking about that Earl Grey. There we go. And we're almost done. Boop. Nice. Okay, so we've got our texture going on there. We've got the TV knob turning every time the channel changes. Looking good, but it still seems a little bit basic. If I do say so myself, we can add a little bit more to it. So if we now choose to move the TV, it's going to make it seem like there's a lot more going on and it will make this really simple animation look a little bit more bouncy. I feel like adding bounce to my animations. All right. So if we want to make the TV bounce, hmm, what we could do is go over to the TV itself, go to the position and move it up. But if we do, nothing goes with it. So this means we're going to have to make things a little bit simpler for ourselves. Now we've got a lot of layers that are using each other aka our tv knob and the heart and all of that jazz but they're taking up a lot of room but we do need to parent them to the tv best way to do this once you're certain that you're done even if you're not i'll show you how to get out of here if you're certain that you're done with them for now you can select all of these you can do uh, control shift and c or go up to composition new composition i don't know if it does it the same way oh no i think you can right click is it right click i haven't done it any other way apart from the way that i did it it's possible oh pre-compose there we go pre-compose yeah so right click and pre-compose or control shift and c call it something and now all of the layers that we just did are in one area and we know we don't really need to go back to change them so this is perfect so now we can see the TV easily. I can grab my parent and click it onto those. I could do the same for the masking as well, actually. Could be a good idea. It could be a very good idea. If you did do something and you did want to take it back out, let's say you wanted the shows to react to what was happening by the TV, although we've got the screen mask, so maybe I'm going to connect to the screen mask instead to make the screen mask be connected to the TV. If you did want something, go back into your layer, control shift and C and paste. That way you can tweak what you need to make another group and go back in. Hi, Christoph. But I think I'm good with this one. So now if you move the mask or if you move this one, it will move this one up and down. I don't need to see that layer necessarily. So I've hidden it, but I can still move it. So that's pretty handy. Let's make sure that our mask or all of our things are connected to the TV as well. And let's give the TV a little bit of movement. Cool. Now, don't forget, depending on where your anchor is, is where the things will be happening from. So if you wanted it to squish, it's doing it from the center because that's where our anchor is. So I think I want the action to happen, whoa, from the bottom. And my chair just slid to the side. Cool. So now that it's at the bottom, if I try to use my scaling, it will scale from where I would assume it would scale from. Now, there is one thing that will help me know when to have the TV bounce and move, which was in the something layer. So I'm actually going to go back, grab the TV knob and paste it on the top and press R for rotate. 
this will tell me every time the channel changes and I kind of want to time the movement of the TV to it so I think maybe we'll have it bounce everything bounces so first and foremost it will go up and down maybe it'll go down here Ooh. let's connect this to it it will go down a little bit if it was a, if there was like a table or something it probably wouldn't go down maybe in scale rather than position but our one's kind of floating in the air so we can do what we like down a little bit up and then by this point it should be back down i think these layers are a bit too close together but let's take a look that's a quick bump we can do the cool technique of dragging out the movement of the keyframes here though and it's too soon probably these two are too close together happens a bit too late i think possibly it should pop down after oh that's it okay that's it <gasps> yes okay cool 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 i think i'll do the scale as well while we're here press u that way we can see what we've done and it's always useful when you press the stopwatch to maybe move the keyframe that it makes somewhere to the side because that's where its actual home base is sometimes if your scale isn't on 100 by default and it's a wacky number it's really tricky to get back to there even if you press reset sometimes it might give you a differing result so keep the original one somewhere just in case you need to get back to it so i've got this when things go down they stretch up they normally get skinnier too but i'm not sure if i'm gonna add that we'll see and when it goes up hold on is that right going down goes up when things go down yeah cool um just need to change the timing of these oh hello auto save is that right oh i feel i've done it in the opposite direction let's see oh i like that more <gasps> okay this is the one this is the one yeah okay cute and we'll make sure that it returns back to its normal position at the very end. Oh, a little bit of a bounce. Okay. Hi, Spawn. We are live. Yes. Now, a really cool trick to make After Effects do a nice squashing, pull, pushing me, pull you situation. When you've changed the scale, if you notice that your green or your Y, the one that makes it go up and down is in a different position. If you make the red line go in the opposite direction, it will normally give you a quite cute result. <laughs> like that! You cutie witty! Look at that cutie witty! Mm. Thank you for the hug, Spawn! Spawn, has it cooled down where you are too? It seems like everybody's feeling the chill now. The relaxedness of it all. Let me pop this over here. Now, one useful thing to keep in mind is that normally there's some pattern to your keyframes. Always there's some pattern. So in my case, where the scale is, is the start of the TV tuning business. So if I make sure that I match up my scale with the first one, is it the first one? With the first one, then I know that my animation will play out the way it's supposed to. And there's how many of these? One, two, three. One, two, three. That means it has to go there. Pull it back a bit. One, two, three. This is going to be intro. Oh, no, that is quite correct. That is correct. Kind of. Pull this one back. There we go. We've we done this one. Let's take a little look at what we've got so far. Make sure it's in the right place. <gasps> it's cute okay continuing the scale starts on the very first one same to this one great it's 79 degrees is chill <laughs> let me find a new oh thank you okay so now we've got the tv moving and it's moving everything inside it as well at the same time 
awesome. If we wanted to, we could have the insides react to the fact that it's bounced as well. So because we've already animated the movement and the position and all of that jazz, if we choose to place that on top of our screen mask, we'll get double the movement. 24 degrees, that's okay. It's still kind of a little bit spicy, but that's still, that's all right. That's not too bad, not too bad. Now, if we choose to just grab it and chuck it on, we might run into an issue. So let's see if we do. The issue might be that it moves the position completely and it did, huh. of course. So we've got a couple of ways around this. If we make a null, if we did all of that movement on a null first, this issue would not be a problem, but we didn't. So here's a workaround if you do do this. Make a null object that can go wherever we want it to go. It doesn't really matter where this one goes at the moment, but I'm going to transfer all of this data on top of it. So now it's got the movement, it's got the right behavior, all of that jazz, perfect. But it's moved itself down there. So what I'm going to do is make another null that controls that null. Here we go. So I've got my driver, I'd say my TV copier and my null driver. So by parenting this one, I can make it go where I want. Oops, I parented the wrong one. By parenting this one, I can make it go to where I want it to go. And then I can parent the other one here. A little bit bootleg, but it will do what we need it to do. But they're moving at the exact same time, so we can't see the difference. So to make sure it looks like it's reacting to the movement, all we have to do is drag the layer back one or two. Make it kind of delayed. Oh, and let's hide the screen masks. We don't need that. And we don't need the TV knob anymore. Woo, cute. Really? Oh no. Wait. Oh no, you're right. I suppose it is close to Halloween. I don't know how I've forgotten that. <laughs> Um, it's really strange. I don't know how I've forgotten that already. Mm. Mm. But I just noticed that the TV tuner knob was actually attached to it, but I kind of feel like it kind of adds to it. That just makes it more jiggly. I love it. Yay. Okay. Number two, done. A little bit more added on. Might have still been a little bit easy. Don't worry. There's one more. Number three. Sharpener. Don't worry, you don't have to animate the sharpener. That's already done for you. You have to do the fun part, the pencil. We're going to have an illusion effect to make sure the pencil actually looks like it's being sharpened down. So we're going to be using our mats, our texture and more. You're not allowed to remember Halloween until after. Is that say fun? I see. There's a whole rule about it. I'm fairly certain I saw stuff for Christmas already about a month or two ago. I like the knob jumping. I can hear the chunk of the turning. Yes. Okay. I feel like it was a job well done. It was a happy accident. Have you noticed when you're doing creative stuff, Wade, that there's normally a happy accident and you're like, oh, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. This is the one. I keep this. So we've got a pencil sharpener group that we don't need to touch. So we can lock that one down. But we've got our pencil. So how are we going to make this pencil look like it's half gone? Very, very easy with our masking, but we're going to have to be a little bit more involved with this one. So let's duplicate it because we need to keep a version of its nose still out and we'll hide this one. Let's first animate the movement. Actually, let's unlock the pencil sharpener. This will tell us when the pencil needs to go into the sharpener. All the time. Yeah, oh, especially like when video editing and maybe you weren't prepared for something to match a certain like sound or a timing. And it's like, oh, amazing. Happy little trees. Yes, Mike. I feel like my life is a happy accident. So, oh, wait. As long as that's a good thing and not a forlorn thing, then OK. So I've opened my pencil sharpener. If you're not sure what to look for, the easiest way to open out all of the keyframes is by pressing U for umbrella on the keyboard. Umbrella that we wish we would need if there was rain, but there is not. Mm. So we've got the pencil. 
I need the position. That's P for position. We're going to start from here. It started moving already. So I'm going to pop it in. And it seems to move until then. So let's have it go in a little bit. Oh, we didn't save where it started. Okay, let's copy this one because we need it to come back out again. So it goes in. Oh, it needs to go in much quicker than that. Okay, so it goes in. Oh, it needs to go in and stay in. So let's copy the frame where it stays in. I think I might want it to go further in though. So there we go. Let's say this is it. Let's turn on our easy ease. Let's take a look. It needs to go faster. What I'm going to do is go into the position, separate dimensions, and we are only using X, not Y. So we can turn off Y altogether, go into the graph editor and play around with this. Spun, I feel like uh, the way that you're talking Wade's language. So it seems to happen immediately. If we go to the bottom layer, don't forget what we learned from the very first animation 101. To make things go slower, we drag out the arm. To make it go faster, we pull it in. Now this bit, so well, kind of need to pull it in a little bit, but I need this bit to happen a little bit sooner. There we go, it goes in. I kind of want it to keep going though. So I'm gonna tilt this up. By tilting it up, it means it's going to overshoot its trajectory for a little bit and then go. There we go. Whoop. We can make it overshoot a little bit more by breaking the tangents. There we go. Be wary though, if they look like this and they're kind of broken, it's going to snap a little bit. So try to keep the yellow lines sort of pointing a similar direction. Seems to be a little bit faster. Let's move it over a little bit. Once we get one right, we can just copy and paste it to the others. Yeah. You know when you're like, yeah, this could be, this could be the one, but it's close, but not quite. Boom, boom, boom. Needs to be out much sooner. Maybe around here. When you zoom in, it definitely helps you see what kind of shapes you're getting. If it's got this roundness going, it means it's going to ease in or ease out somewhere, which you may or may not want. Like a seesaw? Yes. That's okay. That's okay. We can have it slow its way out if we wanted by sticking another keyframe halfway in between the action and dragging the last one out. Now, I know this looks a bit haywire, but if we pull this in, drag out this one, which means it's going to move slowly, and we just want to try to keep the movement looking similar. Remember, trying to make the lines look nice. There we go. We got that nice... <gasps> you can hear it. Oh, the smoothness of it going out. Yes. So that's what we want to get. So now if I just copy and paste this in front of each one, we can depict how far along it goes. So, so it's about there. We'll say it goes in a little bit more. Let's open this back up. Select both of these and pull these down. Woo, a bit too far. We might have to adjust these based on the the cutoff point, actually. In fact, if you want to do the cutoff point at the same time, how about we do it? That way we can see what we need to do. So by clicking on our pencil layer, go up to your rectangle tool. Make sure the layer is selected. See you later, Stacey. Thank you for popping in, lovely. And we're going to make sure we see. Oh, do we want to do it this way? We can do it this way, she says. She's thinking about it. I've done my mask the other way because I'm going to press inverted. So this means if we open the mask layer and go over it this way, it's going to hide it. So make sure before the action happens, let's put a stopwatch on it. Move the pencil in. See where it gets to. Put the mask there. Now it comes out pencils half gone yeah i feel like that joke needs a better setup it's more predictable than i would like but you know you know that i never really catch these 
It's only because Wade was so into it that I realized what it was. So now we need to make sure that it stays again. Pop this further in, check where its newest point is and move it once more. So we got, whoop. Ooh, 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 hold on a second. What? Oh no, that's correct, that's correct, that's correct. Yeah. We've got, oh no, oh, it's still going. <gasps> it's still going, wow, okay. Excuse me. Um, let's pull this out. It should still be there, but we're just gonna have to move the timing of it. Cool. And it's now in the wrong place, is it? <gasps> okay, there we go. We can deal with this, I think. Nice. Kind of wanted to keep it a square. Okay, there we go. We're happy. We're content with this one. So, and then, hello, 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 hello. It's still going. It's still, oh, that, oh, oh. Okay, hold, hold on, hold on. I know I, I see what I did. I see what I did there. I pulled out the wrong thing and I thought that was it. Ah. Okay, so this needs to go on for longer. It's what needs to happen. It's this bit, it's this bit. There we go. Is it done? Yes, okay. And did it get longer? I think it got a bit longer, hold on. We need to get rid of that. The fun, the joy, the joy. Okay, let me grab this, grab this. Did I grab it? Okay, we grabbed it. There. Another check. And one more. And this time it's gonna go. Oh. Pop this one down. She's aware of the time. And it has to go much closer this time. Well, it still does need to go much closer, actually. Let me grab these two and drag them up. And it doesn't come back out. Doesn't come back out this time when you get rid of it completely. Yeah. <gasps> no, you don't go out. You only go in. There we go. So, needs to go a little bit faster and for how you're going to pop your other end of the pencil on just so that there's time for you to see how to do that too fast we need to do it within the confines within the confines and keep going okay let's say that we've got it i'm gonna cut it off there we go so let's say that we've got this part destroyed yeah to make sure the other part of the pencil is on don't forget this pencil we had in the back we're going to parent it to this pencil it's going to do its thing and it's going to come back out but what i'm going to do i'm going to put the transparency on the back pencil and every time it changes position or the mat has changed we just make sure that our pencil is now in the right place and no one will be any wiser we'll cut off the other end as well by doing a mask on this one too there we go you can already see it's got to be somewhere near there great but I think you get the gist of it. Let's turn the opacity back on before we're done. Make sure we don't need the other end of this bit. Oh, turn our inverted on. There we go. So now the pencil does its thing. And we got a little, we got, we got the other side. Oh, we don't even need this, do we? <gasps> we don't even need this. Oh, touche. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. It went all the way through, but we didn't need to see it. There we go. Good. And if you wanted the pencil to loop, just grab a copy of the full pencil and have it come in from the side. Not bad. It's pretty fun, right? Yay. 
So thank you very much for joining. I hope you had fun. But since it's the conclusion, I think you know what's next. Conclusion time. Your homework is to complete the mini game homework. Use texture shading or masking or mats of an animation of your own. Don't forget to have your work hosted in the next lesson like Penny Doodles and It's Easy for President beforehand. Jump into the Adobe Video Discord and at me. That way I can see your wonderful work and pop it on. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Behance Chat, YouTube Chat. I hope you learned something fun, something new. Can't wait to see what you do. Stay tuned as we do have Motion Design Hotline coming right next. Then the grueling grid gripes with Even Abrams and Carl Hamrick. I've been Pixie. Bye. Thank you.